everyone, my name is Kelly. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to cut your own hair um, in different ways. So today I'm going to use the clippers, I'm going to use the um, scissors. So with this tutorial, I want to show you uh, the first step is from scratch. Um, I know that my hair has been layered, so you know, um, some of you asked me how would you do it if my hair was not layered like yours. So I'm gonna just go through that with you step by step. Obviously I can't do it because my hair is not one length, but you can definitely use these steps and techniques if you have one length hair. So right now, this is my hair. So this is how it looks at the front, and this is how it looks at the back. So before you cut your hair, whether you have straight hair, curly hair, wavy hair, um, super curly hair, or any types of hair, I find that it's always best for you to straighten the hair before you cut it, especially those of you who are doing it at home. Because when you straighten your hair, your hair is at the length that it actually be when it's finished. If you cut it when it's wet, hair shrinks after when it's dried. So if you cut it when it's wet, and you intend it to be at that length. When it's dry, it's gonna shrink up. So a lot of times, clients or even you, you're really picky about that half an inch of length. So therefore, by cutting it dry, it's a lot clearer picture. So I'm going to straight iron my hair before I cut it. So this is my hair after it's straightened and as you can see it's quite long and so I'm going to show you the clipper way first. So pretend that after you straight iron your hair and your hair is all one length, okay? The best way to cut a straight hair at the back and even, even though you're cutting on your own, you can still get a perfectly straight uh, even line at the back. So make sure when you part your hair, okay? It's right down the center. So you should feel the center of your neck right there and then part the hair in half. Once you have the hair in half, by you straightening it, it, it will be even everywhere. Because if you didn't uh, straighten it and you have it blow dry or have it wavy, then one side or inside can be a little shorter or whatnot. So make sure when you straighten it, try to make it as straight as you can so that all the hair is even for you to cut. If you want that straight line with no layers, this is a perfect, easy, quick, accurate way. When you cut it with scissors and you're going on it uh, horizontal, sometimes the scissor is not sharpened enough so therefore it will push the hair and you end up and then you end up with really uneven ends. But with the clipper, since it's indented into the hair, okay, you can't be pushing it anywhere else. So it's a lot more even. And also, this is great if you have fine hair. So a lot of people who have fine texture hair or low density hair, they do not like to have too much layers because it makes it look even thinner. So this is a great way to cut your own hair at home if you um, have fine hair or hair that's not much density is to cut it with a clipper if you don't have scissors. If you have scissors then rather than going across like this what you can do is you can hold it and point cut which I will show you in a bit. So first I'm just gonna cut off about an inch just to show you the concept of using a clipper. After that you can cut it at whichever length you want and this is actually for those of you 
let's say you want to go for a lob or a bob, like up to here. And a lot of time you may have trouble uh, getting it even at the back. So what you can do in that case is use the comb. And it's very important in this case to use the comb because when you hold your hand with your finger, first of all, your finger cannot be that straight and also different tension from here to here. So it's not even tension when you're holding the hair trying to cut a straight line. It's, it is possible, but it's just a lot harder. I find that if you hold it with a comb, the tension is accurate and also it's a lot easier for you to hold. So let's say you want to aim your hair to be here when it's done, okay? So what you could do is you can get a clipper, like what I'm holding now, so you will turn it on. I'm not turning it on because you need to hear me. So, um, because it gets very noisy. So what you do, you hold the comb. Don't over direct it because then you get beveling. If you just want it to be straight, hold it right onto your chest. And what you do, turn it on and you will indent it in. As you indent it in, it will cut the hair the same direction everywhere. Just be careful not to wear a shirt that you really like, but what I'm saying is that you can definitely indent it in, or some people find it easier just to go across from it. The only thing of going across from it, going across from with it, is that I find that it's pushing a hair in one direction. Whereas when you're indenting it in, every word is the same. Because if you're going this way, you're pushing the hair that way, and if you go this way, you're pushing the hair that way. But if you want, you can go this way on this side, you can go that way on the side. So it's whatever makes you comfortable. So I would cut it like this, okay? Once you cut that off, it would be like a heavy line uh, bob. After that, you can recomb it, going up about another inch from the line that was newly cut. And then you can use your scissor to point cut the softness if you want to have softer edge. So by you cutting the edge a little softer, it gives you movement at the bottom without layers. I want you to understand layers is when it's higher interior of the hair, that is layers. When you cut movement at the bottom point cutting, that is technically movement slash layer. But it's easier than layers because layers are shorter. It's harder for you to style if you're not one of those who like to style your hair or not good at it, right? A lot of time we may want a straight line. Doesn't mean we want a heavy line. So just keep that in mind. So that's how you would go about of doing a lob or a bob if you want to cut your hair around here, okay? Now, keep in mind, my rule of thumb is cut less because cut, cut less because you can always cut more. If you cut too much and if you're scissor happy, then you can't redo it, right? So just keep that in mind. So that's if you want to go for a bob, a lob. So this, can, this technique can apply to any length you want. And then after you finish cutting it, you will turn around, use a mirror and just check to see if it's all even. But normally, if you cut it very blunt, it's harder to blend and it's, it's easier to see mistakes. But if you point cut it and make it a little softer on the ends, a little movement, then even if you made a mistake, it's still, you know, uh, acceptable or it still hides your mistakes. So that's how you would cut a lob and, or a bob. So if you want the front to be just a straight cut, then you can just cut it and then leave everywhere straight. If you want some framing on the front, then you can do the technique that I show you, hold the comb, okay? And then just slide cut down to as much as you want, or you can hold all the hair in the comb. Whatever falls out, because I know your length is gonna be shorter, Whatever fall out, just let it fall. The important part is at the front here. And then you can just point cut little by little, and then you will see how layers framing the face will um, come about if you do that. And let's say if you want to throw in some bangs or side bangs, what you can do is that, say this side you want the bangs, 
you would do the same thing. Hold the hair all together like this. Whatever falls out, just let it fall. And rather than leaving it long, you can go higher with the layers, which will create a side bangs, right? And then after you can decide how much thickness you want the bangs, and then you can hold it down like this. And then you could just softly point cut some more again, and then check if it's the length that you want. And if it is, great. If not, then you can go a little bit more. So that's how you would do a layered bob, lob kind of uh, style. And then throughout the hair, let's say if you wanted to add some layer in that um, lob or bob, you can part the hair in panels like I showed you in the previous videos. And then what you could do is that you can over direct it and then just add in a few layers and then let it down, look at it and see how it goes. So use the technique that I showed you in some of the videos and gather it together and pick out what works best for you, okay? So, now I'm gonna do this technique on my hair, but just at a different length. So with the technique that I use, you can do it for whatever length you want. So I'm going to use the comb to hold the hair straight down like this. So let's say I'm gonna cut it there with the clippers. So I'm gonna show you if you have a clipper at home, you can cut it with a clipper and then I'll show you how to cut it with the scissors. So I'm gonna turn it on and trim it. See how when I just cut it like that, it's very straight? So as you can see, it's very thick because it's just cutting a blunt line. If that's the look that you want, then by all means, uh, you can use the clippers. But if you find that it's a little thick, what you can do is you can use thinning shears or you can use the scissors to point cut it. So let's say I want to point cut some softness into this. I hold it up. What I'm going to do hold the scissors like this and I'm just going to point cut. So what you're doing is you're point cutting on a 90 degree angle. So you're taking away the weight and not the length. So again, the deeper cut you go in, the more wispy the end will be. The less point cut you do, the fuller the bottom will be. Okay? So I like mine a lot more wispy or more textured so I'm going to deep cut it so cut it and then check it see how automatically after I point cut it it becomes a lot softer and it when it's softer it actually looks like layers but it's basically just movements so that it doesn't look too harsh but again, some people love this look. So it's to each his own, it's whatever you like. Okay, so that's one side. I'm gonna do the same thing to this side. Hold it down, or you can also use a comb to hold it and cut it like this. So just remember, the deeper the point cutting, the more textured the end will be. The smaller the point cutting, the fuller the ends will be. Okay? See how it's a lot softer now? So you can either do it by holding it or you can do it by the comb. And then after that, you can hold it again, bring it up and just cut what you feel is needed. Where you see that it's thick. So the point here is when you point cut, you don't want, you still want a, an even straight line, 
but you want it more unlined if that makes sense right see it's still a uh, straight but it's more textured ends as opposed to a very blunt ends so after you cut that you are going to put the hair back make sure you check your hair because since you are cutting your own hair um, you need to watch what you're doing step by step Whereas for your hairstylist cut your hair, then they can see what they're doing, right? But when you're cutting, you don't really see how it looks. So make sure you take time to just check it to see how it looks before you continue cutting. The point here is please don't be scissor happy because again, hair takes very long to grow and you don't want to make a mistake. So use the mirror to check the back. See if you're happy with the length. So let's say I am happy with my length. Now I'm going to show you how I would do the layers in the front with the clippers. So use a bigger comb if you have to. Okay. So what you do, so if you are having a hard time cutting with the scissors, then you can use the clippers. So there are many ways to cut it. Um, there's just a part here that's still a little straight that I want to have a bit of layers. So again, I'm going to use the clippers. You can either do it like that or you can do it with scissors by either sly cutting like this all the way down. Okay. Or you can point cut into it, whichever is easier for you. Like this. So again, the deeper the cut, the more layered and textured the hair looks. The less deep you cut, the more fuller the ends. So it all depends on your personal preference. Okay, so let's just say here it's very blunt right there. I'm just going to soften it. So in this case, see how blunt that looks? So I can either point cut it or sometimes if you point cut it and you find that it's too, it takes off too light, too much length, then you can use the thinning shears and just thin it out. But I'll just do it with the scissors. So see, I'm deep when cutting it to break up that thickness. Like so. And that looks a lot more blended. Okay, and then you can just adjust whatever you need. When you're cutting your hair, honestly, it's, it's personal preference. Um, you're in control of how you want it to look. And you know, you just cut it. Same thing on this side. I'm going to show you with the clippers. So what you're doing is you're looking at the hair as you're going through it. So when you are cutting with the clipper, make sure you're just gliding it down. Okay, like you're scraping off um, an apple, let's say, okay? Don't indent it in and drag. 
The clipper, if it's sharp, uh, it should not tug. It should go down very smoothly. So the one that I have here is actually my sister's. It's very cheap. It's Conair. Um, you can get this at Walmart, I think. But uh, if it's a sharp, decent one, it would just glide like what I did. Okay. It sh so try not to go inside and drag that because you're going to lose a big chunk of hair there. So it's just if you're not experienced with a clipper, please don't use it unless if you're doing just a straight line because this can really go wrong if it's not used correctly. So if you are not comfortable with using the clippers, then here's the technique with the scissors. So let's just say you wanted to have some side bangs, okay? I'm going to, you are going to comb the hair a little higher like this. And then depending on where you want it to start, like say you want to start around your nose, you will cut it gently around your nose going down. Okay? So for example, you're cutting, cutting, cutting. I'm not cutting mine because I'm happy with my length. I'm just showing you. So you're cutting, you're cutting, you're cutting. And then when you get down to here, you're just point cutting, looking at the hair in this direction. Don't look at the mirror. Look at your hair as you are cutting. If your hair is in your way, take the hair out. But make sure you're looking down like I am and you see where you are cutting so that you are not cutting too much. And again, point cut the ends to add movement. So please don't rush these haircuts because it's hard to regrow it. So after you cut it, you're gonna comb it and see how it looks. So I still want a bit of movement around here. See how that's very blunt? I'm going to hold and just point, cut it deeper and add in a bit more layers. Continue on. So cut it until you're happy with it. Uh, it's up to you. It's all personal preference. Okay, so right now I'm just finessing uh, some minor parts that I want to soften. Okay. So once you're happy, you can double check again. So that looks pretty good to me. And I'm happy with the length. So then after, when you have decided the length of the bangs and you want it to be a little thicker, you can part like a rectangle, okay? About an inch into the bangs. And then you can hold both sides down on the other, take a bit of hair on the other side as well so that the bangs are more connected so that whichever way you flip it, it's, it's blended. And then hold it down with the comb and then just cut whatever you feel is needed. Again, if the smaller um, point cutting, shorter point cutting will give you more a fuller thick bang. If you point cut it deep, it will be more wispier like mine. And that's pretty much it and you can use this technique to go at whichever length you want right you can have it here here or here so that's how you would do it and if let's say you don't like any layers and you just want um, one length with movement then what you could do you can do what I did use a clipper or use a scissors to cut determine the length after that just hold the hair or use the comb and just point cut it deep or you know short uh, point cutting or long point cutting deep or uh, shallow all up to you on how much fullness or movement or how much thinner or wispier you want your ends to be and I find that when the ends are a bit softer it looks less like a pyramid which will give you more volume a lot of time when your hair looks flat on top it's because all the weight is down here when the weight is down here it automatically draws the eye to that volume area 
and it makes up here look flat. But when your hair is movement or has movement on the ends and is soft on the ends, then the volume can bounce and it gives you the illusion of more hair on the top, okay? So this can go for a long hair, short hair, a bob, doesn't matter, but the concept is still the same. So another thing that I noticed that a lot of us like to tie our hair up, okay, so you know, like this, and sometimes we want some framing around the face, just so that our face is not bare like this. So what you could do is, so let's say I part my hair up, so pretend my hair is in a ponytail everywhere, okay? So I just pin that up. What I do is I'm going to part about that much or that much of hair, like about half an inch to an inch into the hairline. See that? So you can part as deep as you want, depending on how much hair you're gonna pull down to frame your face when you pull it up. I just went in about from here to here, you know, about an inch, half an inch, all depends. And same thing on this side. So I'm just going to hold and then just going to comb it down to pull up some hair. A little bit more. Okay. So let's say that's how much hair I would like to frame the face. So minus the bangs, because sometimes I may put my bangs up like this. I'm going to take that away and leave that aside. So now I'm left with these two pieces. So see how they're long and they're hanging? Let's say if you wanted to frame your face so that you have more, you know, you feel like you're a little full around here and you just want to minimize that, then you can do this technique. So you would hold the comb again, same thing. I wouldn't use clippers for this. I would just use scissors because this is uh, detailing. So you can decide how much you want the hair to come off. Like say, you know, layer it a little first, check it, see how you like it. And if you want more, you can always add more. So let's say I want mine to be a little bit more framing. And then that's all you do, like this. So that once you put your hair up and you want some pieces down, it's framing your face. Same thing on this side. Okay. What you could do is point cut and just frame the face. Just be careful not to cut yourself and you can just decide how much layer you want. So I'm happy with um, how it looks right now. And you can have it more or less, it's all up to you. Okay, so that when you put your hair up, you have some pieces falling down like this or you know like that so that's how you would cut hair around your face because a lot of time when you cut your hair or your hairstylist cut your hair they're focusing on the outer layer framing but a lot of time people like to put their hair up so they can pull some pieces down and they can't pull it down because it's too long or it doesn't look right it's because it's it's not cut so I call this interior framing cutting. So it's in inside the outer layer. So the interior face framing. Interior, interior face framing. This is the exterior, meaning the outside framing. I don't think there's a, that's a technical term, but I just made it up anyway, just to let you know the difference between layering inside here 
so that when you're putting your hair up, you can have some pieces down and the exterior framing is this. So that is much it for my um, haircut tutorial on how to trim your own hair. Um, again, these videos, like I said, they're, they are guideline, meaning use the technique, use the steps that I've shown you and you can alter it, you can adjust it to whatever that is um, works for you. So those of you who have tried my haircut and it worked out for you, please take me a picture, send them to me or at you know, tag me on Instagram, Kelly Hong Lee, which I leave the link below. Tag me and see how your hair turns out because I would love to see how my techniques or my steps or my tutorial works out for you guys. So again, I hope that this video was informative for you and it showed you some more technique to cut your own hair at home. I wish you all the best and thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. If you haven't, please do subscribe and please like these videos so that it motivates me to do more for you and also I can raise funds for my charity. So once again, thank you so much for watching. I wish you all the best and I'll see you in the next video. Bye everyone. Thank you so much for watching.